Hi, it's good to see everybody again. Well, I can't really see you, but I'm pretending I can because all your desks are here and I'm pretending I see all of your little smiling faces, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I know you are. You're such good boys and girls. I miss you so much. Okay, so chapter three in Winn-Dixie. So, so far, just to recap, Opal found Winn-Dixie at the grocery store, took him home, introduced him to the preacher. She was a little worried. You know, the preacher always said, no dogs. But um, he fell in love with Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie had this way of charming people because he smiles. Um, he's just kind of a sweet, charming dog. So the preacher said, all right, we can keep Winn-Dixie. So we're going to read now about um, the way the book is going to go is, is just taking us on, us on some of Opal's adventures with Winn-Dixie. So we're on chapter three. The one word I want to show you in chapter three is the word sermon. Um, a sermon is like when Father Scott gives his homily after he reads from the Bible and then he comes down and talks to us, that's a sermon, okay? That's just the way of, of a priest or a preacher talking to the congregation, okay, the people in the church. So that's what the word sermon means, just in case uh, you weren't familiar with that word. All right, chapter three is on page 20 in your books. Give everybody a second to get there. You making your predictions? Just think, what, what would Opal be doing with Winn-Dixie? What are some of the adventures they might be going on? Or maybe even just some day-to-day -day activities. What are they going to be doing? We're going to find all that out, okay? All right, chapter three. I started in on Winn-Dixie right away, trying to clean him up. First, I gave him a bath. I used the garden hose and some baby shampoo. He stood still for it, but I could tell he didn't like it. He looked insulted, and the whole time he didn't show me his teeth or wag his tail once. After he was all washed and dried, I brushed him good. I used my own hairbrush and worked real hard at all the knots and patches of fur stuck together. He didn't mind being brushed. He wiggled his back like it felt pretty good. Isn't it funny that she used her own hairbrush? Eeks. The whole time I was working on him, I was talking to him. And he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have any family, and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old. I can't hardly remember her. And I bet you don't remember your mama much either. So we're almost like orphans. When Dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have somebody understand his situation. I nodded my head at him and went on talking. I don't even have any friends because I had to leave them all behind when we moved here from Watley. Watley's up in North Florida. Have you ever been to North Florida? When Dixie looked down at the ground like he was trying to remember if he had. You know what, I said, ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard, more than I ever did when I was in Watley. When Dixie twitched his ears and raised his eyebrows. I think the preacher thinks about my mama all the time too. He's still in love with her. I know that because I heard the ladies at the church in Watley talking about him. They said he's still hoping she'll come back, but he doesn't tell me that. He won't talk to me about her at all. I want to know more about her, but I'm afraid to ask the preacher. I'm afraid he'll get mad at me. When Dixie looked at me hard like he was trying to say something, what, I said. He stared at me. You think I should make the preacher tell me about her? When Dixie looked at me so hard, he sneezed. Huh, I'll think about it, I said. When I was done working on him, when Dixie looked a whole lot better. He still had his bald spots, but the fur that he did have cleaned up real nice. It was all shiny and soft. You could still see his ribs, but I intended to feed him good, and that would take care of that. I couldn't do anything about his crooked yellow teeth because he got into a sneezing fit every time I started brushing them with my toothbrush. Oh, she's brushing his teeth with her toothbrush? And I finally had to give up. But for the most part, he looked a whole lot better, and so I took him into the trailer and showed him to the preacher. Daddy, I said, mm, he said he was working on a sermon and kind of muttering to himself. Daddy, I wanted to show you the new Winn-Dixie. 
The preacher put down his pencil and rubbed his nose, and finally he looked up. Well, he said, smiling real big at Winn-Dixie, well, now, don't you look handsome. When Dixie smiled back at the preacher, he went over and put his head in the preacher's lap. He smells nice, too, said the preacher. He rubbed Win Dixie's head and looked into his eyes. Daddy, I said real quick before I lost all my nerve, I've been talking to Win Dixie. Is that right, the preacher said. He scratched Win Dixie's head. I've been talking to him, and he agreed with me that since I'm ten years old, you should tell me ten things about my mama. Just ten things, that's all. The preacher stopped rubbing Win Dixie's head and held real still. I could see him thinking about pulling his head back into his shell. One thing for each year I've been alive, I told him, please. Win Dixie looked up at the preacher and kind of gave him a nudge with his nose. The preacher sighed. <sighs> he said to Win Dixie, I should have guessed you were going to be trouble. Then he looked at me. Come on, Opal, he said. Sit down, and I will tell you ten things about your mama. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, Opal, I mean, think about that. Her mom left when she was just three years old. She doesn't, I mean, when you're three, you don't have a whole lot of a memory of, of what's happened before then. So she doesn't remember much about her mama at all, and she's always been afraid to talk to the preacher about it because it made him kind of sad to think about her mom, his wife. Um, so she finally got up the courage. I mean, she's 10 years old. She wants to know about her mom, of course. So she says, just 10 things. Tell me about my mom. And the preacher didn't want to do it. it you could tell it made him uncomfortable. She said he almost wanted to go back into his turtle shell, uh, but he agreed. And when Dixie kind of helped, uh, relay that like he put his head when dixie put his lap, head in the t preacher's lap and so the preacher's like all right so i think when dixie's kind of been good for the preacher to help him come out of his shell a little bit um so i bet if you predict what's going to happen in chapter four you could probably think of what chapter four is going to be about um and that's that well we'll We'll wait and see, I guess. <laughs> but I bet because you're smart kiddos, you can figure out what's going to happen in chapter four. So, as we're going to do after each chapter, you're going to get your paper, <clears throat> chapter three at the top. And then I just wrote on mine, I said, Opal has been thinking about her mama and asks the preacher to tell her 10 things about her mama. Just 10 things she wants to know about her mom so that she can make her own pictures of what her mom might have looked like and what she might um, act like, different things like that, okay? Um, okay, I want you doing your best on your summary, writing neatly, drawing neatly, doing the best you can do, okay? This is something you can totally do on your own. Um, I want you to be making predictions about what's going to happen in the next chapter. I bet you can do that really well. And also, are you making the pictures in your mind? Are you, as we're reading, because there's not pictures in this book, you have to be making your own pictures. Now, let me tell you something. There's a movie because of Winn-Dixie. If you've seen it, that's fine. The only problem is that already makes the pictures for you. I always like to try to read a book first because I like to make my own pictures. So, we... It's on the agenda to watch the movie at the very end of the book. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, please wait. Okay, wait wait to watch it. Just hang tight. Um, you know, you'll, I'm sure you'll get to watch it eventually. But uh, if you've already watched it, you know, so be it. But don't, the book might be a little bit different from the movie, though. Okay, so just hang in there. Let's read the book. Form your own opinions. Make your own pictures. That's the fun of it. Like I said, I'm the one that had... Opal talking in a southern accent. I don't know that she had a southern accent in the movie. She doesn't really, but that's the way I, I figured that she would talk. So that's what I do. Okay, that's it for chapter three. So next time we come together, we'll be reading chapter four. Okay, have a good day. Work hard. Be good for mom and dad. I miss you guys so much. Take care. Bye-bye.